No. You can handle some questions, don't you think? <laughs> hey, Chris. Hey, how you doing? Brett McMurphy, nice yeah, to meet you. Um, you dressed a little bit up there, but I, I'm not sure. You may be the first person in college football history to replace a coach whose name's on the stadium. Oh. <laughs> um, a little bit more pressure than perhaps just making the, the move from FCS to, to Power 5. How do you <clears throat> kind of... You know, you know, deal with all that, yeah. or, or is it? Are we making it more of a big thing I, than it is? I'm hoping you're making more of it than it is. Uh, I understand that who I'm replacing, and have a tremendous amount of respect for Coach, and uh, uh, I think Coach has a tremendous amount of respect for what we did at, at NDSU. That uh, I think that is the right fit. I know it's the right fit at, at Kansas State, but I can't get caught up in all that. If I get caught up in all that, then I'm not focused on my job, which is uh, to make sure that we put a great product out there every Saturday and continue to stack good days upon good days. Which I'm sure you had tons of offers every year. What about this job appeal to you? Uh, Gene Taylor. I mean, that was the simple thing for me. Uh, he hired me uh, at North Dakota State, and I, I know that I did my research in summer times and things, and uh, very, very familiar schools, you know, whether it's the academic side of things, the community, the fan support, uh, all very similar things. And, and I, I had a really good job. I wasn't just going to leave for any job, uh, but this one kind of checked every box for me when I was looking at it uh, late last year in the playoff run. And um, just the fact of me being able to re reunite with uh, with Gene Taylor was something that uh, I wasn't going to pass up if I had the opportunity because I have so much respect for Gene. If you got any major similarities or differences to the recruiting landscape recruiting to this program as opposed to your old one? Uh, I think that's probably the biggest misnomer is recruiting is recruiting. And, uh, you know, we did it 365 days a year, 24-7 at North Dakota State. The same thing we're doing here at at Kansas State, the same thing every other coach in America is trying to do. You're just dealing with probably a bigger area. You're probably dealing with more players, all those things. Uh, but it's still about building relationships and getting uh, guys to matriculate and come to your campus and take a look. And if you get them to your campus and take a look, you have a, a fair shot at them. You've got your success at North Dakota State, Les Miles, that's his, from when he was at LSU. How unique is that for the state of Kansas? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for, for that challenge and, and coaching against Coach Miles, uh, another guy that I've looked up to um, in this profession for an awful long time, and uh, I think it's, it's great for the state. And like Miles, you didn't wear your championship ring. I'd have seven of them on, and I thought they'd be a little bit heavy uh, to have seven of them on, but they're displayed in the office. Come by and see them. <laughs> I know you said you don't pay attention to the polls, but I mean, you're going from being picked number one nationally to nine in your league. It's got to be a little different, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it is. And everybody knew we were going to be picked number one. And everybody probably knew we were going to be picked down. But that doesn't help you win any games. It doesn't help you lose any games. I think it's still what chip on the guy's shoulders they have. You have to have a chip on your shoulder to be ranked number one. You have to have a chip on your shoulder to be ranked eight, nine, ten, whatever we were. Uh, and it's still going out there and attacking every day and making sure that you get yourself ready because we've got 12 one-week seasons. You know, we don't have a 12-game season. We have 12 one-week seasons. And that's why you'll never hear me emphasize one game more than the next because we have to put all of our eggs in our basket for August to get ready for Nickel State. Do you have a recruiting base that you'd like to make? Well, we would like the, the state of Texas. You know, Dallas and Houston have been uh, great for K-State for decades, and uh, we have a lot of alums in those two areas, as well as the Kansas City metro area. That's got to be a great area for us, and we need to keep the kids in state in the state of Kansas. And when you are there a year, do you want players from the state of Kansas? Boy, that would be, you know, being there, they've only been there a year, you know, yeah. a handful probably yeah. every year. Yeah. You know? In the FCS, did you see the type of style of offense? I mean, not the caliber, obviously, of the Kyla Murrays, et cetera, but similar style of offense as much in FCS? Yeah, Eastern Washington. I mean, we had to try to – Cooper Cup, Cup just killed us uh -huh. one year, uh, and they had a kid named Vernon Adams who was a quarterback that ended up going to Oregon. The week uh, in, week Oregon. out, would you see it? Oh, I, yeah, I, I, th I think – no, I thought it was uh, – the Valley was – the Missouri Valley was more difficult than the playoffs were uh -huh. because everybody knew each other so well. That's what I think is so unique about the Big 12 is – and I'm new to it, just like there's three or four other new ones – is the fact that 
everybody has all these analytics on everybody and then there's four of us that nobody has any real analytics on yet that'll be kind of the unique is that an advantage it could be an advantage it could be a disadvantage as well but um, no week in and week out I, I know what we're going up against uh, defensively and that's why having guys like Buddy Wyatt having guys like Van Malone having guys like Mike Tuiasasopo who have been in power five their whole career that's going to be a big advantage and help us because of what those guys have, have experienced how much video this offseason bring 10 guys from Texas every year it depend better bring 10 guys from <laughs> Texas every year how much video off the, this offseason did you watch of these your opponents and and what what's your biggest takeaway from what you're well, we watched more of what our current team was. I mean, you, you would watch the opponent as you watch, but I wanted to see what our guys were. I wanted to see, you know, as we got late into games, what we looked like, you know, shape-wise, what we looked like, uh, all that stuff, uh, technique and things. Um, but I know this, it, uh, you have great quarterbacks in this league, um, much better defenses than I think people give people credit for. There's, there's really talented guys on the defensive side, but when you have – quarterbacks as good as every team has had you know those usually trump a pretty good defense and, and they don't care what level of football you're at uh, you know and you've got a pretty good quarterback it, it makes it miserable on a defense yeah, what do you think of running backs uh would, are the graduate transfers have a leg up going into fall camp or how's that going? I, I wouldn't say so. Um, James just does because he was with us all spring. We have Jordan Brown that just arrived right after the 4th of July. I'm really excited about uh, Harry Trotter. I think Harry uh, is a guy that's been in our program that's a hungry guy that'll play uh, a bunch for us. But we won't be a, a team that's just going to play one tailback. I mean, you look at our track record at NDSU. We played three and four guys, and three and four guys had 800-plus yards. That's what we need to do to be successful. Is, is spread that wealth around. So how would you describe your offense in maybe two or three sentences? Boy, that'd be difficult. <laughs> really, because um, we can line up in 22 personnel yeah. and with two tight ends and, and a fullback and, and try to pound the football. We can line up in those same 22 personnel and line up in an empty set. Um, and, and our quarterback has to have the ability to run. Uh, we're going to get the ball in the playmaker's hands. Whoever those playmakers, if our playmaker is a tight end, once again, we're talking 15 practices is all I've been through. So I don't know where our best playmaker at tight end is at. I don't know where our best playmaker at wide receiver is at. I know we have a tremendous playmaker in Skyler Thompson. Yeah. So we're going to make sure that he has the keys and has the ball in his hands. Do you carry a picture of Carson Wentz in your wallet to show her? Yeah, he probably has a car carries a picture of me, I would, I would assume, and so Carson would do that. It, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I definitely didn't. He's just a close friend now. But, uh, uh, no, it does not hurt when you come into my office and you yeah. see the, the, the jersey of Carson Wentz signed with a nice note to me. And right. I told Easton, because Easton visited me last week, I expect a Chargers jersey with the same inscription on it uh, uh, when he comes and sees me again. Have you heard back on Marcus Hayes' waiver at all? Uh, he will not be eligible this year. He'll sit this, this next year. Given your situation with depth and wide receiver, how tough was it to part ways with Hunter a couple weeks back? Well, it, 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 those are always difficult decisions to make, but I think um, uh, we, we collectively got together in our administration and felt it was the right thing to do, and um, we'll move forward with the guys we have. I'm tremendously excited about a, a, a true freshman named Josh Youngblood who will, I think, be an impact guy that uh, you know we kind of stole out of the, the central Florida area, which has been a big area for a number of guys on our staff, and, and Coach Mess uh, knows that area real well, our OC, OC, and we've always had really good players out of there at, at North Dakota State, and for us to get Josh was a big get because I think he'll help us this year. Did you know the direction that Hunter's situation was heading when you kind of made that call? No, I just I felt in my gut it was the right thing to do. Chris, now that now that the moment's here, everything is kind of stair stepping, and and now you're here. Just what is this moment like? <laughs> It's pretty cool. I got to be honest with you. It, it's uh, it's been a whirlwind. I can't believe it was January 6th or whatever when I started, and I thought, boy, it's going to be a long time before we ever have to worry about playing a football game. This honeymoon could last forever. Uh, and now all of a sudden, it's late July, and I'm I'm in here, and uh, my last recollection of, of Dallas in, in Frisco at uh, Toyota Stadium was pretty dang cool. To come here, it tops it ten times. You know, just being in this environment with uh, a lot of great coaches that I admire, and and uh, I, I know the challenge that's in front of us, and it's a tremendous challenge. But uh, that's why you get into this profession, and that's why uh, if you're a competitor, like I think a lot of our guys are, uh, we're gonna look forward to that challenge. Are you sleeping, Josh Youngblood? As I don't sleep a lot anyway. You know. I've got three teenage kids. Mr. Josh Youngblood is a true freshman. They're gonna play right away. Is there any other true freshman you feel that oh, way about? He's the one that probably jumped out at me the most as far as just. Uh, seeing and hearing about some winter con or summer conditioning as well as talking to Skyler about uh, young players that he's, you know, he's he's worked with. Do you talk to Bill Lynch? Do I talk to Bill? 
Uh, not, well, no, I think that's more the fact that he's just leaving me be. You know, um, he has left me some notes, and I talked to Sean a lot. Um, but I think it's more him just giving me my space. And I, I think that's – I appreciate him for that, to be honest with you, that he's going to let me do this my way and uh, or our way as a staff. And, and I'm excited because the infrastructure we have is because of him. Obviously, he's famous for his notes. Can you share anything that he maybe – No, he just – he did a great congratulatory after we won – what was it, our seventh national championship in eight years? He appreciated good football. You know, that was not easy to do. Chris, going back to the rings for a second, is that something where you just, do you rotate them? Like, what's your, how do you do I don't that? usually wear them because they're too gaudy and yeah. too big. Um, but I don't care where you win a national championship, how you win a national championship, if it's junior college to, to whatever. You have seven national championships, you're doing something the right way, and you've been a part of something the right way. And I was a part of a lot of great teams. I no, By no means the four that I have as the head coach is because I was the head coach. The assistants, the players, the, the the culture we had there allowed me. I'm blessed to have seven national. I mean, I pinch myself every morning to think it's seven national championships in eight years. But what's done is done, and now I need to move forward. When you were at the FCS level, did you wonder, am I ever going to get a shot at the FBS level, or was that even a goal, or did it just kind of happen that? Well, were you I, sitting there going, I want to get to the next level? I would say this: in the off season, I would say, I wonder if I would be a fit for this uh, or that job, but. In season, I was an always be where your feet are guy, uh, and I was going to do everything I could to give our players the best opportunity to have success. And that's why when Bill retired, I was really transparent with our football team to say, guys, I know something has happened that you may not know this, but I have a pretty good tie into that athletic wow. director that I may get, I may get a call. But make sure we know one thing: we're going to finish this thing with the national championship. Did you come close a, to taking another job? In your time? Uh, no, I didn't. You didn't. No. Nope. But you interviewed for other places. Uh, no, not not on campus yeah. or anywhere like that. No. Yeah, right. No. Nope. How challenging is that conversation to have? Obviously, when you're in the midst of. It's, it's difficult. Uh, there's no question. I was the head coach of two teams for a short period of time. That was hard. Um, but I had great support. And uh, the two administrations, Kansas State and North Dakota State, really came together to allow uh, us to finish that journey. And I thought it was really cool that the K-State football players, they sent us a bunch of videos when we were down in Frisco to say, hey, go finish this thing. And that meant a lot to me. In year one, when you're still building stuff, do you measure success at all beyond wins and losses with daily victories? Uh, I think you, you have to do that. Uh, I do it from a practice to practice standpoint. Um, but you know, our expectations are to win this year. What, what is winning? What we expect to win. I expect to win each week and, like I said, go 1-0 and in, in, in a 12-week 12, 12 season because we've got 24 seniors in there that I'm not going to go up and say, hey, guys, appreciate you, you laying the foundation here, but now we're rebuilding, and, and that isn't fair to those guys. I, I expect us to put our best foot forward and come up with great plans and come up with uh, a great uh, – have the guys – work towards winning every week and uh, so I mean success is it's tough to be saying boy if we win X amount of games I don't want to get into that with those guys. Did, uh, when was the last time you had a losing season Chris? Oh uh, let's see it's been a while 2005 maybe. 2005? Mm -hmm. That wasn't fun was it? No it wasn't a whole lot of fun. <laughs> you know, I Who's like your to biggest win influence in your coaching career? Oh there have been a number of people. Um, Dick Mosley, who passed away uh, a year ago, was uh, in the NFL for a number of years. Uh, that was a big influence on, on me. Terry Allen's been a big influence on me. Coach Allen, I played for at Northern Iowa. Um, my dad's been a big influence on me. He was a high school football coach. So I've had a lot of great uh, people that I've worked with or worked for that uh, I take yeah. a little bit from everybody. Were you a quarterback? I was a quarterback in high school. I played DB in college. Yeah, were you as good as uh, Carson? Uh, I don't think I was. I probably was a better DB, but not as good a quarterback. <laughs> Did you say your dad ever coached you? Um, not in high school or anything, no. But he always coached me. He still coaches me today. <laughs> Are you, what was your reaction when you saw John's dunk on Twitter yesterday? Pretty athletic guy. Um, and I hope he didn't tear his ankle doing it. That's my first thing is don't, don't want she get hurt on doing those things. Um, so when I saw the tweet, I was like, oh, great. <laughs> He's out there playing hoops. But uh, I, I'm looking forward to seeing how John continues to grow because I think everybody knows how great an athlete he is. He's still young in the position. He's still learning 
our system, uh, but uh, he's a special talent that uh, we have to continue to keep force feeding him as much of the playbook as we can. Did you know he was that athletic, or did that even surprise oh, you? Oh, okay, no, so no, you I knew. He, I, no, no, no. I, he's a freak athlete. He's a really, really talented young man. So you're obviously very fond of North Dakota State. When can we expect them to see on K Kansas State's future schedule? I don't think Gene and I will probably <laughs> get that done. <laughs> How are you coming about replacing him with Justin Hughes meant to you guys? It's going to be difficult. Uh, Eli Sullivan will move into his spot, um, but uh, J-Ball uh, is kind of the heart and soul of the defense. Even though we have all these defensive linemen here, J-Ball was kind of the voice, and uh, so that will be missed. Um, we'll have him around us this year, but I'm excited that he's going to repeat his senior year. He wants to play, uh, and so I, I look at it as a little bit of a blessing that uh, – uh, I'm going to be around him for two years rather than one because I, I think he's that special of a leader. Do you have a name for your offense? Don't have a name for our offense. No, okay. K-State offense. I don't mm. Sounds like Bill. Uh, some of the linebackers after Sullivan and Patton, just yep. those guys, if you had to go to three, who you might be using in that uh, scenario? I like Cody Fletcher. I think he came on a lot in spring. Um, he would be he would be one. Um, oh, Deuce Green would be another one to be a champ. I mean, there, there's a bunch of guys that I think – we need to find out here in this uh, this August how much they have learned and retained from the spring and throughout their summer captain's practices. How healthy is Nick Lenners at tight end, and what could be expected of him? Um, we'll be interested to see because he didn't participate in anything in spring. Uh, I see him out there running around with his knee brace on. Uh, I think he needs to just gain confidence. Uh, that's another reason why we moved Sammy Wheeler uh, to the tight end position from quarterback is to get another athlete on the field. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to – I don't have a, a great evaluation of Nick, so I'm looking forward to watching him uh, and, and having him gain confidence. Adam Harcher played some fullback and tight end last year. Is there one of those two you see him more at than the other? I think he'll play both. I, I thought he was really impressive in spring and really one of those guys that latched onto our system fast, uh, and uh, he'll play a bunch for us at both spots. So about Wyatt that makes him such a good fit for your defense? It, unbelievably explosive, um, relentless, uh, strong, physical, does it all. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited because I think he just scratched the surface last year. So I think he's uh, an all Big 12 player.